Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Morning Glory video. In today's episode, we shall be doing a quick tip tactica. And oh baby, do I have a spicy meatball for your viewing pleasure today. Do you like the idea of spamming flat damage to weapons at an affordable price point? How about giving those shots full rerolls? And oh, as the cherry on top, they've all got devastating wounds. Well, if you do, then let me introduce you to the topic of today's video. A little tactic, a crunchy combo that I like to call the Brainstorm. And so, without further ado, let's witness your doom and dive right into today's episode. To start off, we're going to need to take a quick look at the data sheet for the Primaris Psyker. Now, most people, when they look at the Psyker, they think of him as a support unit as someone that can buff up and make your other units more durable. And this is because he has two abilities which kind of focus him down this route. You've got Malign Wardings, which gives you a four plus feel no pain against psychic attacks. And then you've got the real doozy, which is Psychic Barrier, which in your opponent's shooting phase, you can roll a dice and on a two plus, the unit that is being led by the Psyker gets a 4 plus in vulnerable save. This is huge, makes them wildly durable. And for the vast majority of players, that's where it ends. They don't really look at anything else. He's just there to make their Deathcore Creek even more tanky, right? But that is looking at the Primar Psyker in the wrong way. That's doing him a disservice. Because you actually want to have a little gander at his weapons for sure he comes with a las pistol and a force weapon blah 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 we don't care about that we care about the mind bullets you see the primar psyker has a weapon i guess it's a power as it were called psychic maelstrom this is a witch fire that is blast devastating wounds and psychic it has an 18 inch range and it fires d6 ballistic skill three plus Strength 6, AP minus 2, 1 damage shots. But you can supercharge it, as it were. You can make it a focused witch fire. And this means it's still blast. It's still devastating wounds. It is hazardous and psychic. But now you get D6 plus 3 shots, much more reliable. And it also goes to flat damage too. Now, for me, it's that focused witch fire, which is really exciting. The... Huge increase in reliability from the number of shots and the fact that you get the damage to just works wonderfully. And sure, there is a slight risk that you roll a one on the hazardous check and the primary psychic's head blows up. But I think it's a risk well worth taking when you consider the amount of bonuses you get from doing it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mordian, it's kind of cute, but it's not exactly a huge damage dealer. What's the big deal about the primary psychic? Well, it's not what he does on his own. It's what you can combine him with. You see, again, most people look at this guy and they think, okay, he can lead your battle line infantry. But what if he didn't lead battle line? What if instead you had him leading a squad of Tempestus Scions? He can do that. That's one of the squads that he has access to. Now, if he leads a unit of Tempest of Science, then not only do they benefit from his malign wardings and psychic barrier, but also the primary Psyker benefits from the abilities of the Scions. And the Scion ability is Stormtroopers, which gives the unit, including anyone that's part of the unit, such as leaders, reroll ones to hit all the time and if the enemy unit that they're shooting at is on an objective they get full re-rolls to hit and let me tell you that is very very easy to achieve because most games of 40k are about people standing on circles it's about people taking objectives and this unit with full re-rolls with a primary psycho who's going absolutely ham on the psychic attacks that's going to be going after objective that's going to be clearing up but wait there's more 
Because not only do we have the Tempest of Science, but we've also got the Torox Prime. One of my favorite dedicated transports. I know a lot of people don't like it aesthetically, but I got a soft spot for the old orc buggy that the Imperium looted back. You see, the Torox Prime has an ability called Fire Support. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, select one enemy unit that was hit by one or more of those attacks. Until the end of the phase, each time a friendly model that disembarks from this transport this turn makes an attack that targets the enemy unit, you can re-roll the wound roll. That's right, full re-rolls to wound. So now we have got a Primaris Psyker who's got four re-rolls to hit and full re-rolls to wound. Attention Guardsmen, this is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off bot action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Format! That means that you have a Primaris Psyker who, on his own, is putting out an average of six to seven Psychic Maelstrom attacks. If you start taking Blast into account, that could easily go up to seven, eight, nine attacks with full reroll hit. So they're nearly all going to hit. And then you get over to the wounds and you've got full rerolls to wounds, which means you've got loads and loads of opportunities to trigger devastating wounds. This lets you cut straight through enemy armor and invulnerable saves and makes the Primaris Psyker not only a threat to a lot of infantry, even heavy infantry with that strength 6, but also allows you to threaten vehicles, almost anything in the game, because those devastating wounds are just going to go straight through and just start taking chunks out of the enemy. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Mordian, that is kind of spicy, but it's one Primaris Psyker. What's the big deal? Well, I put it to you, why are you only taking one of these things? You can attach two Primaire Psychers to one squad of Tempest of Scions. They have that ability. You can put two leaders in one squad. And you can now fit all of that inside one Torx Prime. Whether you go for a five-man Scion squad or you go for a full ten-man Scion squad, it doesn't matter. You can fit all of that inside the Torx Prime because it's got a 12-man carrying capacity now. So actually, you would have two Primaire Psychers with all of those buffs. And then I think to myself, well, why stop at doing it once? You could take a Torx Prime, and then you could take another Torx Prime. And you could take a 10-man squad of Scions and attach two Primaire Psychers to that unit. And then you could take a five-man squad of Scions, take another Primaris Psyker and attach that to the five-man squad, put that in the second Torx Prime, and, oh, look, why don't we just take this to the absolute next level, just go all in, we still have room in that second Torox for a Militarum Tempestus Command Squad. And you might be like, well, why would we take that? Why would we take a Militarum Tempestus Command Squad? Sustained hits, four rerolls to hit, four rerolls to wound, sustained hits. Devastating wounds. Ho oh, ho baby! You could combine this in so many different ways. You could have three little five-man squads run around with one Psyker in each one. You could have three ten-man squads with three Tempesta Command squads and three uh, Tempesta Sound squads and then a Primaire Psyker in each one. And then now, and then three Torx Primes. And all of those guys will be just spitting out horrendous levels of just like devastating wounds and just AP minus two and flat damage two. I mean, if you took this to the absolute extreme, you would have three Primaire Psykers. Each one, let's say they're shooting into a five man squad of space marines for example each one of these units is going to be putting out an average of seven to eight shots let's say you get eight shots per squad all right so that means you're getting 24 shots just from the primary psychers alone 
four rerolls to hit with sustained hits. So you should get four sustained hits from this because of the sound command squads. And then with the four rerolls, I mean, you'd be lucky if you drop if you drop any of them. I don't know the exact statistics, but let's say you hit with 24 out of 24. Between misses and stained hits, you hit with 24 out of 24. Then you go to wound. You're wounding on threes. That means you're going to be able to wound with 16 of these attacks. And then you get full rerolls. So you should wound with, what, like 20? Devastating wounds out of that. You should get four devastating wounds with rerolls. What we're looking at, like... Another two or three devastating wounds. So that's just like let's say let's say that's six devastating wounds. This is all just like napkin hammer, you know, back of a someone else can do this to you know someone else can work this out. Someone else can go full auto awesome tactics to work out the exact amount of damage. But you get the point. You're looking at like six devastating wounds. That's twelve damage. Okay, each one of those that goes through that just kills a marine, and then you've got all the regular damage. You just be clearing away. Any kind of infantry, from light infantry, because if it's light infantry, you're getting more blast, more AP matters. And then, you know, if it's if it's medium infantry, you've got devastating wounds just to clear away squads and the AP and the flat damage too, again, to get the job done. And against vehicles, well, we've just seen there. Let's say you wouldn't get the blast involved, but you would have the four-year-old sit forward. I, I still think you can do between 10 and 12 damage on the devastating wounds with the four rerolls to hit. You can just basically go that vehicle needs to die that objective needs to be cleared that terminator blob it's got to go that horde of termagants gone and you might be thinking okay boy, well, this is a lot of points investment and it is and i would say that taking it to an extreme you are going to sink a lot of points into it but you will get a lot back it's one of those tactics i think you put in as much as you want to get out maybe you just try this once maybe you take one to prime with one type of science squad and one primary cycle maybe two primary cycles and that's your minimum amount and that's going to cost you 90 points for the torx prime and then 120 points to cycle so you're looking at 210 points and then you've got the uh, the science squad in there as well it's like okay so that's going to be 265 points off the top of my head and that little unit just flies up to the objective jumps out gives some people some lightning and then clears the objective it has a great time but you could, if you're running pure Scions, for example, you're already going to be taking the Torx Primes. You're already going to be taking the Scions. You're not actually spending points on stuff that you are taking specifically for this. So I think in a pure Scion army, this has a huge amount of legs. Because it really means that you're just enhancing what Scions like to do best, which is drop in or jump out. I guess not drop in with Primary Cycles because they can't deep strike, but jump out of Torx Primes and just clear objectives. And here's another thing you want to consider. The support units that we're taking are good in their own right. It's not like we're only taking the Scions and the Torx Prime because their abilities are good with the Primary Psyche. No, Scions are actually a totally solid unit. They're a good elite infantry choice. They get lots of special weapons. Their basic gun is AP-1. The Torx Prime is a dedicated transport that punches well above its weight. With the ability to side down infantry or start taking on enemy light armor with its missile launcher and its auto cannons. And it hits on ballistic skill 3+, plus, which most of other transports don't do, making it kind of self-contained. It doesn't need a lot of order support. Even the Sound Command Squad is a totally valid unit. That acts as a good force multiplier and can bring loads of special weapons. You can bring a Sound Command Squad with four special weapons in it. All of these units are doing plenty of damage. It's just that their abilities combine really well with the Primaris Psyker. So in summary, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the Primaris Psyker, the Brainstorm tactic, I feel like it's kind of being slept on at the moment. I think people are seeing the Psyker as a buffing unit. And they're not seeing him for the damage potential that he has to offer. But, of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you think that this tactic has some legs? Or is it maybe just slightly too expensive points-wise to be worth it? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button. And, of course... Subscribe to never miss an episode. 
Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a massive thank you to bon bon vert mad larkin mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy, and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>